Welcome to Beyond 5.2. In this quick hints, we will cover all the smaller changes and additions to Beyond, and each topic will be in chapters below. If you're looking for the larger changes, check out the other videos, including color channels, custom DMX profiles, and the Laser Show Converter Blender plugin. The first group of changes comes to the effects engine. There are now over 175 different effects in the Beyond effect engine, so to assist with finding the one you're looking for, we've added a search function. Simply click on the magnifying glass and type what you're looking for, or type keywords for what kind of effect you're interested in. When you click on it, it'll add that effect to your effect list here below. In color type effects, we've added the new directions for it to go. X, Y, and Z can now be all symmetrical to allow for center in and out of effects on all axes. Also added is XY square slash blend and XYZ cube for moving colors across multiple axes at once. We've also added a few new color key effects designed mainly to work with the new color channels and can be used separately. There's color gradient, color wing, and color wing points. And lastly, there are five new cloning effects also to be used mainly with channels. We have doubler, clone 1D, clone 2D, clone round, and clone round plus center. These were built to be a simpler type of clones whose parameters may make more sense from a lighting console using external input, but also can be very simple and a way to use cloning content for your regular consumption. Our next changes come to projection zones and projector settings. One of the most exciting workflow changes coming to 5.2 is the new auto mesh function. In projection zones under geometric correction in freeform mesh, you can now choose to have the beyond auto mesh mesh four corners. What this does is complete linearity, keystone, and all of those things for you, allowing perfect shaping of off axis content without having to do it manually. And once it's close, you can still convert to mesh 3x3, 5x5, 9x9, or more to make it even more perfect. But this should take a lot of the work out of off-axis zoning. The next addition to zoning is added functionality to the beam attenuation map. We have now added options on the bottom when using the square or gradient tools. On the left, we have options for override, highest takes precedence, and lowest takes precedence. And on the right, we can choose gradients to be from left to right, or top to bottom, or you can even do it symmetrically. And we've added the option for a bullseye. These new functions will help create better and more complex gradients and BAM maps depending on the shape of your room, or if you're trying to add fades around cameras or video projectors. Finally in this category, we've added a few save options in projector settings to help you load and save specific elements for color, beam brush, and more, which should help speed up color correction between lasers mainly. Now for our final category, we have UI changes and more. Let's first talk about the fact that you can now search the entire software from this button. Look for settings, features, tools, and more, all from this one place. When you find what you're looking for, click on it and it'll take you straight to what you were looking for. This search can even look at submenus. Let's search distributed scanning. This will take us to a new tool inside of the configuration window, which allows the user to define their own distributed scanning parameters for those who like full control. Another added function below distributed scanning is the ability to use the preview settings in projection zones as the visualization stream zoning. This will allow users to run a real life setup show and a visualizer show all at the same time without needing separate zone files. The configuration window has also received a facelift. You will now see categories on the left with a list instead of the other old tab style categories. As well, you can see a search function added directly to the configuration window. As this window has continuously expanded a lot over time, it needed that addition. Finally, there are a number of bug fixes and small changes made to Beyond, and some as well to QuickShow. They can be seen now on screen, or you can read the full change log online at the release blog post through the change log itself or on the wiki. If you're still having questions and need help, feel free to reach out to us by emailing support at penguin.com and we'll help as soon as possible.